I showed you the previous model, I think this model make, uh, will make more sense. Um, and now we're looking from the top. So this is the small spring. And Inca block, again, is quite ingenious. Because if you open it, and again here, open it, Inca block can function like this. So now we're looking from uh, the top at the spring and the parts that are in here. And again, I think you will recognize uh, these parts. And again, the real genius is this angle that is uh, making sure it comes back uh, right centered. And here is the same angle. I hope that makes sense. This is the capstone and the chaton. Two different parts. parts. And this is the whole, well, this, this represents uh, the, balance, the balance staff. And this is the hole where the balance staff. And here you can see just a tiny dot. If I play with the light just a bit. And that is the bit where uh, the pivot is resting against the jewel. So maybe a bit technical, but that is why horizontally a movement has got a bigger amplitude because the uh, pivot is resting just on the tip of the pivot. And as you can see here, the tip of the pivot is tiny and even domed. So even though it is tiny, it is resting on the dome just on the slightest tip. So uh, there's hardly any uh, friction. And if a movement is vertical, just like the front wheel of your bicycle, uh, the two pivots are in uh, the jewel. And with gravity, thank you, uh, Augusto, uh, it's resting on two pivots on the side of two pivots, there and there. And you can see there's so much more surface that is touching and gravity and the real, the weight of the balance wheel instead of just touching on the tiniest tip there. So vertically, the amplitude will be less because there's more friction then horizontally, when it's just touching on one tiny surface on the balance staff. I hope that makes sense. Um, for watchmakers, uh, another genius detail of the shock system is that you can remove the chaton and capstone and then the pivot is exposed. So the pivot is exposed. So in the cleaning machine, all the chemicals can reach the pivot and can clean the pivot uh, with the balance wheel just in, in place. So for watchmakers, it is ideal. And this can be cleaned, that can be cleaned, and just a tiny drop of oil here in the middle, and when you take the chaton and place it on the capstone with the new oil on the capstone, it will stick together and then you have one part again. I'll show you the construction of the chaton holder. And then you know that when the spring 
came out. And then we're talking about this on your workbench, uh, maybe a bit smaller. And I will show you if the chaton holder is in here, you just usually, if it's really good quality, you cannot place it back. So remove the chaton holder, and then you see the great secret of Inca block. Both sides are not the same. And if you look from the top like this, they appear the same, but they're not. So the base of the Inca block spring can be placed in there. And then it is back uh, in its original place. And then the chaton holder can be placed back. Um, and for me, that is, it is a fiddly job no matter how experienced you are. But for the watchmakers who are watching, and not just the enthusiasts or the, the collectors, uh, just a tiny tip. Because if you're holding the spring with uh, the tweezer, remember this is uh, a spring. So if it's bent just like that, it will jump out the tweezer very, very easily because it is under tension. But if you simply use a um, uh, peg wood with just a bit of rodico and then you manipulate it like this, if there's, uh, if you put it like that, you see there is no tension just that it won't jump away, the Swiss space program. Um, for me, this is uh, the best way to manipulate a spring like this. But uh, again, if you got another uh, way of working, and if you ha <laughs> again, if you're handy with chopsticks and you can uh, place a spring like that uh, using chopsticks, please do. But for me, this is uh, a nice way to manipulate the spring without placing it under tension so it uh, moves away. And then there are two ways of placing the spring back like this. That is simply using it like this. And sometimes it's so much easier to place a spring like that and have this bit in your uh, tweezer and do it like that. Uh, whatever floats your boat, whatever flicks your switch, um, if you like to do it like that. Uh, but for me, it is handy and if you like, you can uh, even place a bit of Rodico so you can scoop the spring like this. I hope that makes sense and I hope uh, uh, yeah, it's useful. Well, this is Inca block, but there's always a but. There are many, many makes of shock system. A staggering amount here in the marvelous Best Fit. Best Fit is indeed the encyclopedia of watch material. This is part two. Um, very handy to to determine uh, a caliber, a movement that you don't know uh, what make of, what make it is. But 
I would like to show you the shock system. Here the name and here country of origin and the spring and you can see a capstone well it's got a different size but it's just a ruby uh, with one flat side and one curved side. In a moment I'll tell you why that is. And the chaton you see that's just a big piece of metal usually uh, with sloped edges with a jewel inside. But the shape of the spring is can uh, is enormous. The difference in there. And here you can see again the Swiss, the French, the German, Russian, uh, Japanese. It's insane how many uh, shock systems they are. Um, all with a different name, all with uh, the people who work on Rolex and uh, um, uh, Seiko probably recognize this one. Um, you can see all the different shapes, sizes. So what we call Inca block really doesn't have to be Inca block. And even here, this is Inca block. You can see this is Inca block as well, even though it's got a different shape. Uh, the amount of parts is insane of just any shock system. And this is really not even the KIF uh, variant. Cortebert, Sima, uh, Phoenix. The list goes on and on and on. So what I try to um, explain is that if we talk about Inca block, it's just one of the huge amount of manufacturers of shock systems. And usually when we say Inca block, we mean shock system. But Inca block is just one of many shock systems. I hope that makes sense. Now I would like to tell you another genius bit. I try to uh, the spread the, the, the genius uh, inventions of which are incorporated just in a shock system because it's so well thought through and it is absolutely genius. Because a capstone, that is just this bit, always has one flat side and one curved side. And the usually the chaton is curved. So one, when you oil uh, the shock system, you have to make sure you oil, oil the right side of the capstone. But most of you watchmakers um, um, already know that. So, um, but the nice bit is um, why one side is uh, straight and one side is curved. And that is once you oil the shock system here right in the middle Keep, because of the capillary workings the oil will always be sucked just in here because it will always look for this bit because here it's wide there it's narrow so the oil will be sucked in the middle and that's exactly where it's needed because of the lubrication of the pivot. So that's why the chaton is curved, the capstone is flat, so the oil will always be in the center and stay in the center. And that's exactly where it's needed to lubricate the pivot. Again, so much genius 
in such a small uh, uh, such a small invention. So I hope all the components of the shock system now make sense. Uh, the spring, the capstone, chaton, chaton holder, pivot, and balance. Uh, pivot, balance staff, and balance ring. And I hope um, you're aware, but maybe you were already, that Inca Block is just one manufacturer of a huge array of shock system uh, manufacturers. And let me get one book. Breguet, the man, uh, he is the Jimi Hendrix of watchmaking. It's very evident the time before and after, and he is amazing. And um, I've done several streams about him. So if you're interested in history, uh, please refer to uh, other videos in uh, in this uh, on our uh, watchmaking channel, YouTube channel. Now we know the balance wheel, the tiny pivot of the balance staff, and here we see the earliest version. Here we see the earliest version of the shock system. It is working three-dimensionally, 3D, because of the length of this part, it can move up and down. And due to this beautiful curve here, it can move a bit sideways. So this will protect the, uh, the shock system. This was called parachute. Um, and is late 1700s, early 1800s. But the Inca block and the normal uh, shock system in a wristwatch is just about 1948. Uh, again, there are exceptions, I'm well aware of that, but as a rule of thumb, uh, you won't see a shock system in a pre-Second World War watch movement. And now, in the introduction earlier on, I promised a surprise. I've shown it one time before here on stream, and I still think it's amazing, because we have this piece here in an actual watch, uh, which is here. Uh, the pocket watch. Again, key wound movements. Usually, again, I'm quite aware of the many exceptions that if there's not a crown here, it's before 1850. Again, I know the exceptions, but as a rule of thumb, it works quite a bit. If it's key wound, usually before 1850. And again, if you're interested in this, uh, uh, there's the, the history of watchmaking on our YouTube channel. Please have a look. Here is the beauty, a beautiful parachute shock system in a pocket watch. And maybe uh, watchmakers already see that the temperature compensation is in here, in the timing the timing pins, that's genius. And here, as you see, we haven't uh, restored this watch already. Uh, we haven't restored this watch, but we will. This is working three-dimensional. It can, the, the pivot can move like this, and uh, the capstone can move like that. Genius. And for the real uh, freaks, the temperature compensation between the timing pins. No, that's nice. And even though this is the spring, with this tiny screw, you can see there's a plate on top of the spring to hold in the capstone there. So 
the invention of the workings of the shock system isn't that new or it was for was there for at least 150 years but Inca Block uh, made it on an industrial size and it doesn't sound too revolutionary at the, uh, as we talk about it now but they made it interchangeable and if you think in 1948 if you look at the, the for example the cars or the vehicles from 1948 interchangeability wasn't that much of an issue at that time but they made it on an industrial size they made it interchangeable and then they made accurate timekeeping uh, available for the masses for everybody with just a simple uh, inexpensive uh, mechanical watch if it had a shock system um, it was so much more usable and um, uh, reliable than one without Inca block and that's why until way into 1970s and maybe early 1980s uh, it says Inca block on the dial just like uh, oh Thomas Thomas Sands thank you so much for uh, your subscription and uh, thank you so much for your support um, very very nice to see you here again so thank you Thomas um, just like a turbo on an engine on an uh, internal combustion engine it's an addition to an existing uh, piece uh, the engine was there uh, for many 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 years and then they invented the turbo which uh, was an upgrade for a normal engine so any car with turbo on the back well really was something especially uh, in my time in the 70s and 80s but uh, same is in Inca block the mechanical movement has been there for centuries and as you uh, follow this stream quite regularly hardly anything has changed for the past 200 years and I really do believe that the basics of mechanical watches but then came Inca block just around 1948 I'm aware of the, of the exceptions and uh, it was a dis such a valuable addition to th something that was already there so that's why the way in the 1970s says Inca block on the, uh, the dial and that really said something about the quality and durability of the watch so that's about it I've showed you uh, the movements without Inca block why a mariage watch uh, is vulnerable for shocks and then the simple but beautiful shock system and now you immediately recognize that this is Inca block by the shape of the spring but now you know as well that Inca block is just one of many um, manufacturers of shock systems and now well yeah uh, the next step is uh, Harry Otto, thank you. Is a balance spring that is moving in a magnetic field, so no pivots, no uh, lubrication, no friction, and no shock system because there is no pivot to be broken. Uh, beautiful stuff. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. I really enjoyed it. 